The bushes for the coupling rods really are quite a simple turning exercise. As my crank pins are 9.5mm diameter, I'll be reaming the bushes accordingly. And the external diameter needs to be 12.7mm to fit into the coupling rods. In my translation from Don's Imperial measurements to my metric, I've got some rather odd dimensions to machine when it comes to the lengths of the bushes, but nothing that should cause me any problems. As I was machining the coupling rods, I did very quickly identify an issue I'm going to run into. Although the coupling rod has been machined so that the main body will stand clear of the boss, what I missed was the actual size of the boss. And if I just hold that roughly in place, we can see that the coupling rod is not going to go down because it's fouling with the boss. That's a real pain because it means I'm going to have to take the wheels apart to re-machine these bosses. But there you go, that's one of the joys of varying the design and particularly varying the design on the hoof like I'm doing. But we'll get over it. In the meantime, I'll get on with turning the bushes and I'll come back to dealing with that wheel boss later on. I'm going to turn the bushes in pairs. So here I've got a length of phosphor bronze, around about 20 mil, which is plenty long enough for me to make a pair of bushes for the leading crank pins. Fitting the collet chuck to this lathe is by far the best modification I've made. Well worth the effort in doing so. So I'll centre drill this now, drill it out to 9.4 mil with a couple of drill bits and then ream it at 9.5. With the internal diameters reamed, I could turn the outside diameter to fit the coupling rod, swap the piece around in the collet chuck and do the same on the other end before moving on to the vise, cutting it into two and then moving back to the lathe to face off each bush to length. Here are the bushes for the front wheel crank pins. I think that's going to be a little bit too snug, so I will use a bit of lapping paste to carefully open up that internal diameter, bearing in mind that the outer diameter will be loctited into the coupling rod. I've forgotten to turn the outside diameter here. That should be 15.88 millimetres. It doesn't really matter, but I will tidy that up later on. Whilst I've got two bushes, bear in mind they've all got the same internal and same external diameter across all six wheels, I can do a little check. It's a bit of a snug fit on this end. I don't really want to force it, so I'm only going to put it in partially at this time. What I'm really pleased about is that despite my earlier concern, the front of the rod is not fouling with the boss. The bush at 1.6mm on that internal face is just enough to lift the rod away so it doesn't foul. So I'm really pleased about that. It's no real test because it won't bind with just one rod, but we can see the action. Next I'll do the bushes for the driving wheels. And with two pairs, we should be able to see whether or not it binds up. Flush with success from the first pair of bushes I've turned. I've now moved on and turned the coupling rod bushes for the driving crank pins. These are slightly longer. So if all is well, I can fit these now on both sides and it will all run nice and smoothly. As I said earlier, I will put some effort into lapping the front bushes to the crank pins just to give more play on the front. In fact, there's, there's bugger all play there. So I'll be surprised if this doesn't lock up. And I'll fit the rod on the other side now. You won't be able to see this, so I'm working on the other side. Just need to remove the return crank. Well, it's gone on. Oh, look at that.
binding of it there so it's tight this is a genuine first application I haven't done this off camera but the rod on the other side is not pressed up against the bosses on the wheels interestingly enough the coupling rod on the left hand side on wheel number one is fouling against the wheel boss just a touch so I think that will need a little bit of machining of the coupling rod to get rid of that and that's that tight spot there which is why it's pushing the coupling rod away otherwise I'm ever so pleased before I log tie the bushes into the coupling rods there's a couple of little jobs I need to do and to do so I've turned this little mandrel in the lathe so that I can fit each one of the bushes and do those jobs. First I just need to skim off the external diameter on the two driving bushes. As I said earlier they were slightly oversized. And secondly for all of the bushes I cut a slight recess. As I've called out in my earlier videos I do like to have some space for the Loctite to sit and to do its stuff. With those jobs out of the way it's just a case of applying the Loctite fitting the bushes in place and securing them temporarily with the clamp. I also dealt with the issue where the left hand cupping rod was fouling against the wheel boss and rather than just take a file to knock off the edges I put it back in the mill and used the round nosed end mill to extend that cut on the inside of the coupling rod. To finish off the rods I do need to deal with the oil pots. Firstly I need to knock them all down in size. They're sitting way too proud at the moment so that's a simple job with the end mill. Once done I use the edge finder to find the centre of each one. And then using the 2.5mm stub drill I go down about 5mm before swapping the drill out for a 1mm and going all the way through. With both rods fitted there is still a tight spot here but I've not yet lapsed the internal diameters on the bushes for the front crank pins. But as we can see here the wheels with the coupling rods fitted will run and I suspect if I was to leave it as is the rods, bushes and crank pins would soon wear into place. To finish the rods I need to machine the rear set but that of course will be very much a repeat of what I've done for the front rods so I'm not going to cover that off in a video. Instead I'll come back when I'm machining the caps for the front and the trailing crank pins. In the meantime and as always thanks for watching.